so we're going to get started with some songs. Uh, we are the Center Vermont Solidarity Singers. You know, the labor movement and so many other movements have had singing at the center of, uh, of their movements. So, we, so we're going to start with a song that's call and response. It's called Rise Up. So we'll sing a line and you just sing it back to us. It goes like this. Rise up, we're going to rise up. 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 We ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. We ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. Because the people united will stand our ground. Because the people united will stand our ground. Stand strong, we gotta stand strong. 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 The powers that be can keep us down. The powers that be can keep us down. We're gonna rise up and turn the world around. We're gonna rise up and turn the world around. The people are marching, so get on your feet. The people are marching, so get on your feet. I said the people are marching, so get on your feet. I said the people are marching, so get on your feet. The people are ready, so follow their lead. The people are ready, so follow their lead. We're gonna end all this violence, this hatred and greed. We're gonna end all this violence, this hatred and greed. So rise up, we gotta rise up. 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 We ain't gonna let nobody turn us around. We ain't gonna let nobody turn us around Because the people united will stand our ground Because the people united will stand our ground yeah. Yeah. All right, so the next song on your song sheet, uh, this is one actually for some of you who are at the some of the earlier workshops and panels today, you might have heard us and we sung us with, uh, with us, but it's a song that comes out of organizing in North Carolina around coal ash. Um, and it's really fitting with the theme of the day. So it's, you know, your struggle is my struggle. Someone's hurting my neighbor, my sister, my brother, our families, and it's gone on far too long. And the way this works is we'll, we'll sing the kind of calm and everywhere where there's an underline, that's where you sing with us. So it's gone on far too long. And you'll you'll pick it up. We'll sing it. We'll sing it a number of times. You can sing any part you want. Um, but if you if you uh, don't want to sing anything else, at least sing far too long. So somebody's hurting my brother, and it's gone on far too long. Oh, it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. Somebody's hurting my brother, and, and it's, it's gone, gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Somebody's hurting my sister. Somebody's hurting my sister, and it's gone on far too long. Oh, it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. Somebody's hurting my sister, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Somebody's hurting our children, and it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. Oh, it's gone on far too long. Somebody's hurting our children, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Let's say taking our health care for this one. Somebody's taking our health care, and it's gone on far too long. 
Yo, it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. Somebody's taking our health care, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Somebody's closing our borders, and it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. Oh, it's gone on far too long. Somebody's closing the borders, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Let's close with the people. Somebody's hurting the people, and it's gone on far too long. Oh, it's gone on far too long. Yes, it's gone on far too long. Somebody's hurting the people, and it's gone on far too long. And we won't be silent anymore. Let's repeat that. And we won't be silent anymore. One more time. And we won't be silent anymore. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's close with uh, Lead with Love. So we're going to do, uh, skipping ahead to Lead with Love, this is a song by Melanie Damore. It really speaks to, you know, it's a time when a lot of us are afraid and are kind of freaking out all the time. Um, but it's a song that uh, really speaks to saying that you're, we're not alone. We have each other. No matter what's happening, we're, we're going to move forward, we're going to lead with love, and we're going to do that together. So this is another one that has a chorus and then a column response. Yes, at 8 o'clock. Yes, yes. You got to put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You got to put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. You're not alone. You're not alone. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Keep moving on. Keep moving on. You, you gotta, gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with a foot. One foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with Don't you despair. Look up ahead. Look up ahead. The path is there. The path is there. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other. Scared. I know you're scared, and I'm scared too. And I'm scared too. But here I am. But here I am. I'm right with you. Right next to you. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with a put one foot in front of the other and lead with a everybody. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with a one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Another round of applause. Thank you. Woohoo! Because when we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. And workers have fought for worker rights for centuries.
countries and we are here supporting past workers, future workers and present workers. Woo I want to introduce you to Reverend Joan. Reverend Joan is from the Unitarian Church of Montpelier and she's going to open uh, giving us some wise words. On this May Day, International Workers' Day, we recognize the many people whose work is a blessing and call on those who are in political leadership to act with justice. We honor the farm workers who provide us with our food and milk, but who often work in dangerous conditions and struggle to provide sustenance for their own families. We honor the restaurant workers who prepare and serve meals and wash dishes and who go home bone tired and too often depend on the generosity of customers to make ends meet. We honor the construction workers who push their physical limits to build our homes and places of work and worship, to build bridges and pave our roads. We honor the child care workers and health care workers who tend to the physical and emotional needs of the young, the elderly, and the sick. We honor our teachers and educators who cultivate the minds and hearts of our children. We honor all those whose work are the threads that keep our communities stitched together and who too often feel frayed by low wages, lack of health care, and unaffordable housing costs. We join in solidarity and prayer today to call on our legislators and elected officials to act on the cries for justice in our communities. We join in solidarity and prayer to call on all owners and managers to recognize the dignity of workers and to uphold the standards of our moral values and faith traditions by providing living wages, affordable benefits, and the freedom of association. Holy God, divine source who we call by many names, be with us in our struggle for dignity in the workplace, for a living wage and for fair benefits. Bless all of us as we continue working to bring forth our collective vision, a vision for justice and peace, kindness and compassion, grace and mercy. Amen. And because together we are unstoppable. Juntos venceremos. This event has been hosted by the Vermont Human Rights Council, comprised of 350 Vermont, Green Mountain Labor Council, Green Mountain Self Advocates, Justice for All, Migrant Justice, Justicia Migrante, National Lawyers Guild, Peace and Justice Center, Price Center Vermont, Rights and Democracy Vermont, Rural Vermont, UE Local 203, U.S. Local 255, United Academics, UVM, Vermont Center for Independent Living, Vermont Workers Center, and Vermont Interfaith Action. Let's give them a round, round of applause. And now I want to introduce you to Brenda Churchill. She represents Church and Democracy and the LGBTQIA Alliance. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. I think she meant rights and democracy, and I just, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold uh, this cell phone up. This is a trick I learned. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I guess I drew the short, short straw, and I get to go first. I want to thank Emma Schoenberg for inviting me to speak this afternoon, rights and democracy. Uh, and I want to let you know I represent the LGBTQ Alliance of Vermont and, and RAD today. On the first day, yep, on the first day of May, this is... Uh, Workers' Rights Day. In the past, I've testified in support of many bills, but none is important to my community than S-40 raising the minimum wage and S-196, a bill that would create paid family leave. I want to tell you about my experience with paid family leave. 
I could sum it up by simply stating that I've been covered by several collective bargaining agreements for the result um, for the uh, being a union member for the past 35 years. As a member of the United Auto Workers and then until I retired, the Communication Workers of America, these benefits brought me the ability to pay my bills on time, buy food for my family, and most importantly, get healthy again. I will admit that having this benefit was a privilege that went above average wages and health insurance. I'm going to repeat that. My paid family leave was in combination with good wages and health insurance. Without these three things, I would not be alive to speak to you this afternoon. Paid family leave is a cornerstone benefit that is clearly something every member of my LGBTQ community needs. Shifting gears to S40, I want to speak about the state of Maine that raised their minimum wage in 2016. Equality Maine, a statewide LGBTQ organization, issued the following statement regarding wages and the LGBTQ community. The unfortunate reality is that the biased attitudes and discrimination limit the economic opportunities available to many LGBTQ people. As a result, low wage jobs and limited access to high paying jobs contribute to disproportionate rates of poverty in our community. The impact is staggering. Recent studies have shown that LGBTQ couples raising children are twice as likely to live at poverty line compared to non-LGBTQ parents. And transgender people are nearly four times as likely to have a household income under $10,000 a year compared to the population as a whole. As our work to combat the bias and discrimination that perpetuates these disparities is ongoing, raising the minimum wage would make an immediate and significant difference for members of our community who are struggling. The LGBTQIA Alliance of Vermont echoes these statements of Equality Maine and views the passage of S40 as being the single most direct and effective step which Vermont can take in response to these pay inequities. When you add paid family leave to raising the wage, you will begin to bring all Vermonters that are in marginalized communities together in a much better place. We're going to ask Governor Scott to once again lead in protecting all Vermonters and signing S40 and S196. Thank you for listening to me speak today. Because if we can't have it, shut it down. 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 Let me give it more. If we can't have it, shut it down. Now I want to introduce you to Max Barros from the Green Mounted and Self Advocates. All righty, so thanks so much everyone for being here today. It means so much for Green Mountain Self Advocates and the Vermont Human Rights Council to have our family come together on May Day at the State House. You may think it's funny uh, for me to refer to you as my family, but if you give it some thought, we are together in terms of standing up for each other and what is right. Just like brothers and sisters, we've got each other's backs. Right now, we are in a time of uncertainty. There are a lot of issues that we must pay attention to and decisions will, will be made that will affect us all. However, despite all of this, I am grateful to be a part of such a strong movement where no matter what, we are here and we are not going anywhere. All right. We are the Vermont Human Rights Council. We organize together to advance human rights and ecological justice in Vermont. We embody the power of thousands of Vermont voices. We are, here are some of the groups that belong to the Human Rights Council. 350 Vermont, Green Mountain Self Advocates, Justice for All, Migrant Justice, the Peace and Justice Center, Rights and Democracy, Rural Vermont, United Academics, the Vermont Center for Independent Living, the Vermont Interfaith Action, 
and the Vermont Worker Center. Thanks to all of you for being on board with our movement, supporting us every step of the way. To all activists here, all over the state, country, and the world, thanks for keeping us all as peers strongly connected by speaking up and speaking truth to power. We, we are the engine that keeps the train moving along the track toward economic justice, racial justice, and a livable planet under the banner of one movement for people and the planet. Let's keep it going. We gather here at the State House with a message of justice, equity, and unity. In a political climate where our struggles are seen as an inconvenience to protecting a bottom line, we must come together and rally for our human rights. This will not only be a moment to hold elected officials accountable, but to build a stronger movement for ourselves. The Human Rights Council shows how we are more powerful when we act together. We build unity among ourselves and fight for human dignity. The bills that our legislation decides upon will be only one step toward keeping Vermont families housed, healthy, and safe. So however, now more than ever, we need to come together and tackle issues of systemic racism and income equality within our own communities and within ourselves. Please join us in lifting up a message of unity and solidarity as we head into a long summer of working together for our human rights. Thank you. Because the people united will never be defeated. El pueblo. El pueblo unido jamás será vencido. And so we have all these works that all these groups that have come together to bring us here, fight for our rights, and there's a bucket that's come up, up to give donations to let us continue the work, to let all this group continue to be together, continue to push reforms that will have worker rights in the forefront of justice. And there's some buckets coming up, so if you know that, uh, reaching to your pocket, everything counts. And now I wanna introduce you to Michelle Salvador and Tef Kelman from Vermont Labor United. Hello, good to see everybody. My name is Michelle Salvador. I'm a state employee for 20 years now. I'm also a member of the Green Mountain Labor Council and the newly formed Vermont Labor United. And this is Tev Kelman. I'm Tev Kelman. I am a member of Vermont NEA and of the Vermont Workers Center and standing here with Vermont Labor United today. International Workers Day. It's the day that we celebrate the achievement of workers and making our world a better place for all of us to live because workers' rights are human rights. These days in Vermont, though, it doesn't seem that there's too much for workers to celebrate. Our democracy is in the hands of money, power, and global capitalism rules. That's right. More attacks than ever are being directed at Vermont's workers, and so too are attempts to weaken us by threatening the workplace rights that we have, contract victories that so many before us fought so hard to win. Everywhere we look, we are seeing our contractual rights slowly being eroded by the legislature, by the state administration, and our employers. State employees just sustained a major attack on our health care and our latest imposed contract. 
Boo! Currently, teachers and school staff are having their rights to bargain for their health care forfeited legislatively. The Senate is getting ready to vote tomorrow, 830, you should be there on a nomination for the neutral, I repeat, neutral position on the Vermont Labor Board. And the candidate who is up for nomination is a corporate lawyer who spent their entire career fighting workers, preventing them from unionizing and fighting them at the bargaining table. And as a matter of fact, Right to work legislation hangs on the wall of this state house every single session. This state house, our state house. And while this is happening, many among us are not even aware that this is going on right here in Vermont. And that this is a very real threat to our livelihood and that of our families and friends. So I know that I don't have to tell you that Michelle is speaking the truth here, right? All of us here know because we're living this. We're living in 2018. And these are hard times for union members right now. These are hard times for working people right now. These are hard times for the working class because that's what we are. We are the working class. And we got here today because of a trick that the other class, the ruling class, the 1%, has used since ancient times to keep the workers down. I'm talking about divide and conquer. I'm talking about pit working people against other working people. Divide us by race, by language, by gender, by what trade we are in by what nationality we're, we are, what language we speak, so we don't pick our heads up and see who we should really be fighting. Divide and conquer. That's how they've gotten away with what they've done to workers in this country. That's how Donald Trump and Paul Ryan and Scott Walker win in states like Wisconsin and Michigan, union states. That's how the Koch brothers are planning to take down public sector unions once the Supreme Court rules on Janus this spring, paving the way for national right to work legislation. <laughs> Boo is right. And that's exactly what Phil Scott and his allies are doing right now to my union, Vermont NEA, pitting communities against teachers, trying to fork, force us to give up local bargaining for health care so he can impose a contract on teachers across the state. Yeah. Hey, that sound familiar Ooh. over in the VSEA? Yeah. But we also know the answer to these tactics. We know how to break their back. We know how to build power to demand the working conditions, the living conditions, the social conditions that we all deserve. We organize, we build power, and we fight. We do what our brothers and sisters in Kentucky, Oklahoma, Colorado, Arizona, West Virginia are doing. We do the work to build the relationships in the community. We form solidarity across unions. We reach out to other organizations, other workers, whose fight is also our fight. And we develop the common vision of what we're all fighting for, and we make demands that benefit our members and advance the collective good. We fight for better health care, not just for our members, but for our communities, because we know that health care is a human right. Hold on, page a second. We fight for a living wage, not just for union workers, but for all workers. Because a living wage and work with dignity is a human right. We fight to protect our contracts, but we also have to fight to protect the social contract. Because that's the only way we win what we all deserve. We've got to be united. 
And it's time to bring our voices together. It's time to stop protecting management and politicians from workers and from the impact, the power of our voices united. I'm a history teacher and I'll tell you, no battle in labor history was ever won. No rights were ever gained by complacency and give backs. Doesn't work that way. That's why we're Vermont Labor United. Michelle. Thanks, Tab. So members from many local unions have begun working together to bring rank and file allies and advocates from unions across Vermont together to educate and organize as well as to identify opportunities to join together to fight for our rights together. Where we once stood alone, we will stand together. We have learned that when we stand alone, they work to discredit us. They tell us we're not doing things the Vermont way. They attempt to instill fear in us and they try to stop members from standing up and taking action with threats of retaliation and worse. They may attempt to silent and discredit our voices, but we are here today to say that the workers will be silent no more. So we invite you to stand with us and stand united. We are Vermont Labor United. And I'm gonna end with a quote from one of the labor activists who was hung following the tragic events in 1886 at the Haymarket Square in Chicago. The day will come when our silence will be more powerful than the voices they strangle today. Solidarity! Cuando luchamos, ganamos. Cuando luchamos, ganamos. Cuando luchamos, ganamos. Cuando luchamos, ganamos. When we fight, we win. When we fight, we win. Talking about worker rights and unions, we want to invite you to march to support the UVM Medical Center nurses on May 12th at noon in front of the entrance of the UVM Medical Center in Burlington. Also, I want to invite you on May 9th, the Vermont Coalition for Ethnic and Social Equity in School will have a community forum here. There's a bill uh, to bring ethnic studies and social equity in schools. When we have a the, the voices of the majority um, in school curriculums and misrepresent and exclude people of color and people from different ethnic and social equity groups, we need to change that. So the Vermont Coalition for Ethnic Studies and Social Bills introduced a bill, uh, well, we drafted the bill introduced by Representative Kaya Morris and uh, is now in, yes, and it has now been added to the educate to the S257, which is a miscellaneous education bill. So we need support. There's a petition going around that will be submitted to legislatures. Uh, again, community forum on the 9th of May at 6 p.m. here in room 11. Follow us. There's flyers that are people giving around. So follow us on that. And now I want to introduce you to Aro from 350 Vermont, and who's going to give us some amazing music. Thanks. Yeah, we're standing here together, standing up for human rights, justice, workers' rights. I'm here to put some of these words to music and uh, call this song Peaceful Persistence. That's what it's going to take for us for, to make change. I wrote this during the Occupy movement, and even though we're not camping out on in our cities and towns, Occupy is alive and well. Woo! Sorry if you can't hear the, the uke too much, but it's there. Corporate greed will not feed the masses. Out on their ass 
says we are the 99 percent we want our government to be accountable to us not big oil or agribusiness what kind of democracy is this not financial institutions they are the problem not the solution not the military industrial complex and not the auto industry or pharmaceuticals health insurance it's indisputable they are ripping us off ripping us off they're ripping us off ripping us off we will occupy we will not comply we will bear no
soy mujer, soy latina y soy inmigrante. Hoy estamos aquí para conmemorar a todos los trabajadores de todo el mundo. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Uli Palacios. I'm a woman, I'm Latina, and I'm an immigrant. We are here today to celebrate workers all around the world. La comunidad migrante en Vermont somos parte importante que, sostenemos, que ayudamos a sostener la industria lechera. Muchos somos jóvenes con sueños estancados y otros tienen familia. Trabajamos largas horas, muchos sin descanso. Trabajamos ganando poco. Uh, incluso ganamos menos que el salario mínimo de Vermont. Siempre hemos sido considerados la mano de obra barata. The migrant community in Vermont, we are very important to sustain the dairy industry. A lot of us, we are younger with broken dreams. Others, we have families. We work long hours. Sometimes we don't have a day off. We work with low wages, less than Vermont minimum wage. We always being considered cheap forced labor. Y en general, todos los trabajadores de la tierra estamos siendo explotados por el sistema alimentario y no, y no se aprecia nuestro trabajo. Reconociendo esto, Justicia Migrante trabaja junto con Rural Vermont y con la Alianza de Trabajadores de la Cadena Alimentaria para traer cambios a la industria alimentaria y tener dignidad para todos. En general, everybody that works the land will always be exploited by the system. Our work is not appreciated. Recognizing this, Migrant Justice works together with Rural Vermont and the Food Chain Workers Alliance to bring change to the food industry and bring dignity to everybody. For decades, my community has suffered the discrimination, the odio, the racism and the criminalization. En todas las administraciones, sin excepción alguna, hemos sido perseguidos, encarcelados, separados de nuestra familia y, puert y puestos en deportación. For decades, my community has suffered discrimination, hate, racism, and criminalization. All the administrations, without exception, we've been persecuted, incarcerated, separated from our families, and been deported. Y en esta administración de Trump, desde su inicio, sus ataques de odio, racismo, han ido, han ido creciendo y haciéndose más visibles a todas las comunidades como LGBT, color, inmigrante, mujer. Y todos estos ataques se sienten más visibles y directos. And now the Trump administration, since he's been running with all the attacks, with hate and racism, has been growing up and making more visible to all the communities, the LGBTQ community, people of color, migrant communities, women, and now all these attacks feel more direct and visible. Soy mujer, latina e inmigrante. He sido parte de este ataque. He sido perseguida por cuatro agentes encubiertos en marzo del 2017, encarcelada por 11 días y hoy me encuentro en un proceso de deportación. Muchos de mi comunidad también han sufrido este ataque, como Miguel, Quique, Francisco y otros que no están hoy presentes aquí. Pero seguimos aquí en pie de lucha, todos como comunidad, logrando triunfos como el programa de leche con dignidad. I'm a woman, I'm Latina, I'm an immigrant, and I've been part of these attacks. I've been persecuted for four uncovered agents in March 2017, incarcerated for 11 days, and today I'm here fighting my deportation. A lot of people in my community also have suffered this attack, as Miguel, Kike, Francisco, and others that are not here today. But we're still fighting, we're still standing up. We are all together as a community achieving success, such as the Milk with Dignity program. La persecución y el encarcelamiento son una táctica muy injusta que usa el presidente para intimidar. 
que mirar a toda una comunidad, porque a él y a todos los racistas no les gusta que levantemos nuestra voz y, en, y nos organicemos para defender nuestros derechos. The persecution and incarceration are tactics very unjust that the president is using to intimidate a whole community because for him and other racist people, they don't like that we are organizing, that we're raising our voice to defend our rights. Decimos no al miedo. We're saying not to be afraid. No regresaremos a la sombra. We won't go back to the shadows. No nos daremos por vencidos. We won't give up. Seguiremos organizándonos y levantando nuestra voz hasta el final de la lucha. We will still organize it and we will be raising our voice to the end of the struggle. La comunidad migrante junto a Justicia Migrante y con el apoyo de grupos uh, de aliados, grupos de fe, estudiantes y apoyo de otras organizaciones, hemos ganado el programa Leche con Dignidad. Y estamos haciendo hoy responsable a Ben and Jerry's en toda su cadena de ranchos lecheros. Y tenemos que trabajar así en solidaridad con los dueños y trabajadores para ser responsable a las grandes corporaciones. Y así crear una equidad y justicia para todos. The migrant community with migrant justice and the support of allies faith communities, student organizations, and others, we have achieved Milk with Dignity program. And now we are making Ben and Jerry's responsible in all their supply chain. We have to work in solidarity with farmers and farm workers to make the big corporations responsible and create equity and justice for all. Muchas gracias. Seguiremos luchando a pesar de los ataques. Y diremos, no más deportaciones, no más separaciones de familias, la unión y la solidaridad en todas las comun comunidades. ¡Sí se puede! Vermont that, have, that has kicked off. I'm a tri-chair. There's a lot of training that's going on. 
Uh, we are representing a, a nonviolent moral fusion direct action, which includes civil disobedience, which is going to be happening starting on the 14th of May, leading all the way through 40 days thereafter. How many people already knew about that? How many people are going to be involved in that? So what, we, what we're going to do is I'm going to inform you about a couple of things on how you can get involved. This is an action talk here. If you can take your phones out, you can, you can dial 90975. 90975 and just text the word moral, M-O-R-A-L, 90975 and just text the word moral and you will be updated and you'll be plugged into the campaign and you'll be made aware of a series of events that will be happening leading up to, during and after uh, the 40 days of civil disobedience. Okay? For years we had seen a, a kind of attention violence toward issues of systemic racism, poverty, militarism. There was a time when our nation was fighting a war against poverty. Now it seems we're waging a war on the poor. Our social fabric is stretched thin by widening income inequality while politicians criminalize the poor, fan flames of racism and xenophobia to divide the poor, and steal from the poor to give tax breaks to the richest neighbors and budget increases to, to our bloated military. The twin forces of white supremacy and unchecked corporate greed continue to gain more power and influence both in state houses across the nation and the highest levels of our federal government. Today, one, of every two, one in every two Americans are poor or low income while millions of children and adults continue to live without access to health care, housing, clean water, and good jobs. At the same time, the issues of systemic racism and poverty have been forced to the margins of our moral narrative and claims that a limited focus on our personal morality should over should overshadow and supplant the commitment to public morality rooted in a critique of greed, racism, and injustice. At this time of continued political, economic, and moral crisis, with the lives of the most vulnerable and the spirits of all under vicious attack, people in growing numbers around the country are fighting back for their lives, communities, and also their deepest values. There is a resounding call today there is a resounding call to reclaim the moral nation, the moral soul of this nation. We need a poor people's campaign, a national call for a moral revival. So I, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to update you on a couple of things and get you out of here because I'm getting ready to go drink some beer. So what's, what's going down, what I want you to know about, hi Peter Kellerman. What, what I want you to know about today, which is most important is, is there's an art build. Okay, there's an art build that's going to be happening at Goddard College this weekend in support of the Poor People's Campaign by the MAKE. How many people heard of the MAKE? Okay, so get over there 4th, 5th, and 6th of May. Uh, I think on the 5th of May there's also going to be some kind of dance party that's happening at the Hay Barn so you can get over there and shake it up a little bit, okay? I see you out there, Bobby. The other thing I wanted to make you aware of is, is on the 12th there's going to be some training and what you need to do is, we're not necessarily going to put the, all of the training locations out right now, but just go on to the poor, go to poorpeoplescampaignvt.org, poorpeoplescampaignvt.org, and you'll be able to find more details surrounding the training that's going to be happening um, in the upcoming days, okay? Again, we are in desperate need of a poor people's campaign, a national call for a moral revival. For too long have we sat on the side and, and watched politicians. For too long have we sat on the side and wondered where our next clean water was going to come from, where, where you know, if we were ever going to uh, make $15 an hour, whether or not we are going to have health care. You know, all of these issues and this, this narrative of scarcity and this moral narrative that has been distorted since the creation of this nation has got to go. How many people understand that? I'm going to leave you with the song. And the song is Everybody's Got a Right to Live. How many people believe that? Yeah. And the song simply goes like this, and you sing it. You, it says, everybody's got a right to live. Everybody's got a right to live. Everybody's got a right to live. I'm going to listen to you. Say it louder, everybody. Everybody's got a right to live. 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 Nine oh nine seven.
975, text 90975 with the letters M-O-R-A-L. Poor People's Campaign, a national call for a moral revival. Mark is gonna go have a beer. You know where he's gonna have a beer? He's gonna have a beer at Three Pennies because we're gonna go and celebrate the Vermont Workers Center and all their work and uh, have some french fries. It's a fundraiser for them so they get some proceeds for everything that you drink. Um, I wanna thank you to come here. Please check the Human Rights Council. They're on Facebook and join their events and continue to work and continue to march for our rights and here um, the solidarity things are gonna help us close this amazing event. Thank you and si se puede! Se puede! Si se puede! Si se puede! All right, that was an inspiring day, inspiring rally. We're gonna end with a song that fittingly comes from a bunch of different movements. It was sung by uh, uh, sharecroppers in the 1930s, by auto workers, uh, by the, the American Civil Rights Movement, by the United Farm Workers, and it continues to be an anthem that just connects a lot of different struggles. This is uh, the anti-war movement. It's, 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 it's all about the interconnections of our, of our struggles, of our aspirations. This is We Shall Not Be Moved. We'll sing it in English and then in Spanish. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's standing by the water. We shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. No, 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 no,
one final announcement, Three Penny Tap Room. It's a fundraiser for the Mont Worker Center. Come join us at Three Penny Tap Room and uh, drop a dollar in the bucket on your way out for the Vermont Human Rights Council. Thank you for coming out and happy May Day! Woo!